Hey, it's Rob from Fandroid.com. I'm here with the Motorola Droid, which is running Android 2.0, and the T-Mobile G1, which is running Android 1.6. It's kind of interesting because this is the first phone to ever run Android 2.0, and this is the first phone to ever run at all anything. So, um, in any case, we there are a lot of additions in 2.0, and that's obviously going to change the settings. So I wanted to just show you guys some of the, di or actually all the differences in the settings uh, to show you guys, you know, help you get around possibly a little bit better. Um, first of all, top one is wireless and networks on 2.0. It's the same thing as wireless controls from uh, from 1.6, just a different name. You can see the menus are the same, except airplane mode is at the top on the Droid. And on the G1, it's on the bottom. Now, once you jump into mobile networks, there are some uh, bigger differences. You'll see that on the G1, you've got only two, use only 2G networks. You can change your network operators uh, if you have the proper codes. And not that you're going to get, you know, 3G or anything, but you can switch over to AT&T. Um, and you need the proper information to do all this stuff and the right access codes and access point names but it's possible on the G1 with Android 1.6 it doesn't look like you can do it on uh, the droid with 2.0 and I don't know if that's something that uh, Verizon requested be removed or if uh, or if Android 2.0 just doesn't have it call settings are completely different too and I mean completely different we've got a bunch of things on the droid that aren't on the G1 or sorry 2.0 or 1.6 you've got voice privacy DTMF tones hearing aids TD all these things aren't on uh, 1.6 and I'm not sure if this is a CDMA GSM issue as well but there's huge differences between between the two uh, call setting capabilities next we've got sound and display settings Oops. and one thing that is new on the droid is haptic feedback. Vibrate when pressing soft keys and on certain UI uh, interactions. You can see that you cannot find haptic feedback on the G1. And this is something I think that's just on a phone by phone basis. Uh, something else that's new that I'm not exactly even sure what it is on here is emergency tone. Set behavior when an emergency call is placed. So the options you can do is off, alert, and vibrate. I am kind of clueless as to what that is, and I'm not about to make an emergency call to test it. Also in here we can see, let's see, animation settings. The old uh, 1.6, if you select it, you can just do show animations or don't show animations. In 2.0, there's actually a middle ground where you can do um, no animation. And I'm not sure if you can see that well. You can do no animations, some animations, or all animations. Next up, we have location and security. And formerly, this was called, see right here, we've got location and security. Formerly in 1.6 called security and location. Wow, sweeping change. Um, but... The differences here are you can, well, the unlock pattern that you can set uh, is changed from, set, uh, it used to be on the bottom set unlock pattern, and now it's on the top, it's change unlock pattern, but if you haven't set it yet, then it would be on the, that would say set, uh, small change I know. Um, the other option on 2.0 now, which was interesting, was install from SD card. I'm not exactly w sure what that is. It's got to be some kind of... Uh, it says install encrypted certificates from SD card. So, if you click on it... It says no .p12 file found in the SD card. So, I'm guessing this is some type of way to verify your status for an application or syncing or something. Uh, I don't know, we should get some more, hopefully, information on that, too. Let's go ahead and enter the uh, applications. And you can see on here, on 1.6, it's called applications as well. Um, 
there's one new thing on 2.0, and it's running services, as I'm sure you can see. So I can see what exactly is running right now, and it actually allows you to select it and kill it. It shows you how long it's been running for, and you can... Uh, at the bottom it says some things about the available memory, but for example if I press on one of these, it'll say the service will no longer run until started again, it could have undesirable consequences, yada yada yada. Uh, we're not going to end it, but there you go, so you can kill active services. Let's move on to accounts and sync. And this is the same thing as data synchronization in 1.6. The, r the real difference is how you, well first of all you can add accounts here. So I can add a corporate account, a Facebook account, a Google account. I could add multiple Google accounts if I wanted to. And it allows me to, in the 1.6 you had to manage all of your accounts using one system. If I press menu I can sync but I can't add more Google accounts. Using 1. Point, or using 2.0 I could add a new Google account and with each Google account, I could choose to sync the calendar, sync contacts, sync Gmail. So some of them I could sync, some of them I don't have to. So it gives you the option on an account by account basis. It also allows you, it comes equipped with Facebook sync. And this is crazy. Uh, Android 2.0 has. APIs built in for syncing so developers can actually tap into this power and build syncing um, syncing services for their own websites, their own applications, their own integrations with Android which is pretty cool. Privacy is new. Okay so in privacy there is use my location in 2.0. It's security and location with uh, with 1.6 and they actually call it share with Google back up my settings that's new in in 2.0 we should figure out exactly what that is too uh, the factory data reset isn't in here with um, it's not in there with 1.6 because that can be found in the SD and phone card storage section so now we're at, how do you know, SD and phone storage. So uh, that's pretty much the, the only difference here is you can't factory, factory data reset is now in privacy instead of SD card and memory. I don't, I don't get that. I think it made it more sense in 1.6. Next we've got search and there is search as well in in 1.6 and uh, the only thing changed here is searchable items uh, by default YouTube pops up and the other one YouTube doesn't pop up what do we have next uh, language and keyboard this is the same as locale and text all the same stuff. I think that language and keyboard sounds a lot better. Good job, Google. Accessibility. G er, this is interesting. Accessibility on 2.0 has a bunch of features. Talkback, kickback, soundback. Whereas on 1.6 with the G1, it looks pretty inaccessible. Text-to-speech. It was called speech synthesis in 1.6 and uh, it's actually if you upgraded the 1.6 you'll need to install voice data um, and besides that everything in here is the same so I did install it on my G1 this is an example of speech synthesis in English that was on the Motorola Droid So you can see that there's a, there's a difference in how fast it started reading it and also a difference in the loudness. That's totally different situations, but the, the speaker on the Motorola Droid is definitely louder. Also, you can change the speech rate. This is pretty funny. Let's do very slow. 
and let's change it to Spanish and then let's do speech rate here and do very fast and make it German and then listen to each oh my gosh <laughs> Next we've got date and time, and actually I'm not even going to go into it because it, everything is the exact same. So one funny kind of difference is in about phone. If you select about phone and then select status, I'm going to cover up so it doesn't share the phone numbers real quick. The battery status of the G1 is not charging, and the battery status of the Motorola Droid is discharging. That doesn't sound too hot, but hey, I guess it's true, I don't know.